and we're and we're live and we're live and we're live we're yeah live. so um hello man so, so yeah kieran how you doing it's been it's been a good day really we spent good day. the whole day together um and we've done some movement we've done some breath work we've got in the sea um both you and max and we'll we'll speak to max in a bit yeah but like how have you found today awesome like it's been on the cards for a while eh? yeah um I just wanted to set it up, and I think with this sort of stuff, it can be quite um, intimidating. Yeah. Like for me, right now, I actually feel a little bit nervous about it. Like being in front of a camera for the first time in a while <laughs> and speaking for it. It's a bit of a weird one. So I thought, like, let's get this is the first time I met you today. Yeah. So it's been really nice. And just do, do some stuff that I know we both kind of liked, right? And a bit of context for people. Like, we've we've got a mutual friend, yeah. like, very good. Um, Toby. Toby. Watching. For Toby, yeah. He wanted a shout out as well. Yeah, he did want a shout out. He texted me last oh, night. He's, he's like, you've given, him, you've given him that option now. He's like, you didn't mention me on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, it's all right, mate. <laughs> Don't I'll worry. Get co- I'll get you some. Uh, we'll get you in. We'll right. get you in. No. <laughs> but no, good on him for setting this up because I'd seen some of the stuff that you've been doing. Yeah. Um, and then even just through that, I think it was, that's the power of social media. Like, the fact that I saw on your toby's instagram you'd chucked him in the sea yeah um and it was from what we've been speaking about today it was the fact that that was at the time the headspace you were in you wanted to go and do some you wanted to go and get in the sea mm-hmm. and it, and you i saw you on that then i was like oh, who's this kieran fella like then when and found your story yeah um and i was like wow so to go from where you were to what you're doing now and, and the stuff you believe in like massive transformation yeah. so um yeah, it's been a really great day to get to know yeah, you. Yeah, and I think sure. there's so many things that Likewise. we've we've been speaking about that um that just resonate and similar uh, story, right? Very, ex-athlete for you, ex-athlete for me. Yeah. Um very from similar areas. Yeah. It's all sort of links together, right? And the same thing for me. I saw you online and, and because of how social media is, I think we're in quite a privileged position at the moment. How, how we can put all of ourselves online mm. and show everyone what we are and who we are. And then if they want to re- interact with you, they absolutely can. And they're allowed to. And that's how we met, right? Which yeah. Is, it's lovely. And that's the, the positive side of social media that I want to really embrace. Yeah. Because there's, there's negative sides to it, which we're all aware of now, which I don't like at all. But the actual social side of social media for me is one that I want to sort of grab onto. And this is exactly why this sort of thing is perfect. Because it allows the conversation to get open about the, about what you actually want to talk about. Yeah, Which yeah, I think yeah. is very, very important in this day and age yeah totally but let's um let's let's rewind it yeah. a little bit Do it. um and so rugby professional yeah. rugby how did you even get into it um it's always a weird one because people ask me like i think a lot of kids of it their desire maybe they always want to be successful you always have that oh it'd be amazing to be a professional rugby player international rugby player but as a kid i would never let that sort of drive me i would never openly let that be a a thing that I wanted to do, I'd always be quite, uh, I guess, humble about it to a point. I would never draw. I was never driven to be a professional rugby player. It's always sort of just, oh, that's been cool. That's been good. And then you get positive reinforcement for, you know, when you're younger and you're playing well, and you get positive reinforcement from that. And so you keep progressing. You up to the Sussex, and and it basically just gradually kept going for me. And I never got to a point where I was like, I'm going to really try here. Not that I didn't. Not that I wasn't trying, but I wasn't passionately devoted to being a professional rugby player yeah it just kind of happened and it was progressing basically Chichester rugby club um i think i missed the age group around the 16s i was injured but i went into the age group selection at the 18s level and progressed up to the south east london and south east divisional side yeah um and then played there what position were you there so i was a second row and a blind side flanker and a number eight so sort of all across that um, back five in the pack um, which was quite good at the time sort of allowed me to play wherever I needed to um, and then when I started getting a bit more serious I probably went more for the back row that's where I was suited I was a bit more mobile um, and I progressed ended up playing quite well in the right times in the right games in front of the right people and then ended up playing for England under 18s in the representative side um, and it was all amazing but all a bit of a shock to the system because I'm yeah. a, yeah. a um, I'm not from the private school background the the sort of public school regime that you sort of become aware of that at that point i'm from a, a state school uh, i've never paid for education sort of thing you yeah. get chucked into this into this world of 
all right, these kids have been here for like four or five years on this journey, like up into the England 18s, into the academy setup. And it was all quite new to me at the time. It was it was an eye-opening experience. And so I, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just in there doing it and taking every opportunity I could um, when it came. And that's sort of just how it happened. I almost just feel like I fell into it. Um, really? Yeah, honestly. That's, I, that's I, awesome. I went from England under 18s. So I was there and it was a mad time. I was in college. I was just thinking about it. I went from two months to playing for Chichester, then to playing in two months time, playing for England under 18s. And then because of the, that, getting the exposure to the academy system. And then I got picked up um, by London Irish. So from within two to three months, I went from a regular nobody at Chichester to an actual signed professional rugby player. Wow. And that's sort of where my life completely switched on its head. Yeah. Um, like I said, sort of a working class, low income family. And now a professional rugby player at 18. And it was a bit of a mad one. I completely crazy one to sort of get your head around and it's taken me a while to sort of figure out the whole thing so uh, when you like because of that quick entry yeah how um how was your head getting around sort of I, i'm guessing because how quick it was mm. you're not having to think about professional I didn't way of doing things and just jumping in so that's i think it actually was a blessing and a curse now i think about it too loud? Yeah. Mm. Now I think about it, I think it's probably at the time it was a blessing for me because I didn't I didn't allow myself to think about yeah. it. I just had to be there in the moment and I was just I think I know when I think about it now, I was quite stoic at the time. Yeah. I just, whatever happened, I just got on with it and looking back at it, I have my mindset back then was just just get on with it. All I knew was it was a working class mentality. Just get your head down and work hard. That's all you can do. So that's yeah. all I did. And I just took the opportunity where wherever it came and worked hard at the moment when I need the work. Yeah. Um, so I, that's always been a blessing. But only with hindsight now coming out the other side, I, I can sort of think about it. I'm like, if I think about it hard enough now, I'm like, I don't know how I dealt with it at the time. Mm. I have no idea. I just did it. And that's probably one of the, my philosophies in life now is that it is all about action. Mm. Like you can speak and think about it as much as you as you want, but unless you sort of act on that and actually do, it means nothing. So, and I think that at the time that's where where I was at with it. I didn't, I couldn't comprehend it. It was too much for me to even think about. So I didn't. I just did it, and that doing and doing and doing, building consistently over time, it does bring about success, and that's just how, how it happens. Uh, and then when you're so you're like eighteen. Eighteen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. I was a late bloomer, and you were you were London Irish. I'm mean, a well, yeah. I'm I I didn't turn pro till I was twenty. Like, mm. It was um, I I kind of feel like that. It's a nice age to to turn into sport. I think I think because you you once you I always speak to um to young athletes about one eighteen critical age because yeah. everything becomes available in your life. Yes, especially here in England. I feel like, very lucky that I got thrust into a, um an environment of growth-minded successful people yeah because I, I can see from my peers and others in my life around me it was that that time they went to university they went off traveling they went off to do live their life to start their life mm. and that's amazing i felt at the time maybe i was missing out on stuff but actually in hindsight now looking back i missed out on, on all the the bad parts of that all the stresses of being in debt in in university having to figure out this life on your own outside of your parents house yeah i was doing that as well but i i was in the institution of a professional regime yeah i had it very easy when i look at it now a very privileged very easy but it was an environment where i was allowed to succeed mm. and, and allowed to progress and i had no barriers but it gives me empathy now understanding that i was very lucky to be in that position whereas all my peers weren't in that position they didn't get the knowledge the experience that i had so that's why i feel like this sort of stuff now is allowing us to come open up the conversation that we've had these life experiences yeah maybe you haven't but maybe now we can just talk openly and share yeah that. here's some of the stuff that we kind of we've, we've experienced and we know and, and try and implement it anywhere you can in your 100%. life and whatever you're doing yeah well, i think we've had that all day really haven't we? we've been saying like god it's just amazing how much we we feel lucky to have, have been in a professional environment to actually to have these sort of I can give people yes. can give people these these things to to help them out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like when we were saying earlier, sorry, it, like on. we were saying earlier, 
it was um it's little things that we don't think about because we've they're deeply ingrained into us as athletes right yeah it's that um self-development growth mindset well that, that mindset is you understand not maybe not everyone has that yeah um so it's just trying to get that across it's it's not i'm not better than anyone else i'm it's just this is my life i've lived this is what i've learned from it and this is what i take from it yeah and that's what i believe I'm, the conversation needs to be open about totally yeah totally so when you're when you you've you've turned pro mm. um what what was the the next sort of journey for you i always yeah. feel like there's phases in yeah no 100 percent. isn't there there's phases 100%. there's phases in a career like you kind of go i'm gonna yeah. even how quick it happened for you yeah. like, i'm gonna become a pro yeah uh oh i'm a pro now yeah well what um what what was the next sort of journey for you there yeah so basically if you think about it an 18 year old signing this pro contract you feel like the world's you're you're the top of the world yeah and your ego goes with that um and i definitely had an ego and it it drove me and then you get into the actual um the real world day-to-day of being a professional rugby player and at the beginning i'm not gonna lie to you i just was out of my depth completely like first year first season i was the academy i was in was a very successful academy the London Irish Academy has always been successful, but the year I was there, just just fortuitously was very good. There's Jonathan Joseph, Marcus Watson, Matt Garvey's, Max Lahees, Jamie Gibson, uh, Anthony Watson, Marlon Yard. These names, are, they're the good bloody players. And I was there and I was a nobody. I was mm. just this kid from Chichester, like nobody. And I got there and I was 102 kg soaking wet and trying like, that's just- 102 kg yeah. soaking wet. So like, I wasn't a big person. What? No, I second, second row. <laughs> I know, right? But second row is my. I mean, you're six six. I, I, when I first met you there, I was like, my is, God, you're massive. Yeah, for me, I'm a hundred and two. How much do you weigh now? So I'm ninety five kg at the moment. For so me oh, okay. in my head, I'm, I feel like a small person because oh, I used okay. to be one hundred and fifteen, right? Oh wow! So basically, I, when I got into my first year in rugby, I realised I was not physically prepared for this. I was not mentally prepared for this, and all I, I just have to get my head down, and get bigger, and get me- more mentally resilient. And all I had to do was that's all I did got mm. my head down, used my work ethic that I learned from growing up from my bloody dad. Um, it didn't require any skill, anything like that. I just worked harder. So you felt as soon as you got into that environment, the physicality was the thing that was going to be the the big part? Yeah. Um, uh, was that you just, you felt, right, I've come in from like a kid's world, now I'm in a man's world. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, I, and I've got to, I've got to have that. Matt, so did you put on, did you, did you try, did you go, like hypertrophy and, yeah. and and lift weights and yeah so and that was your main focus 100 percent. yeah so there is a part of this where is um you're actually becoming a man as well yeah yeah you're playing kids rugby uh, until you're 18 and then you're going into men's rugby i sort of skipped the part where i went from kids rugby and then you normally progress third team second team and progress up i went from kids rugby into professional adult rugby so it was quite a very big it was a very very big step up probably one of the reasons i had a lot of injuries at the beginning of my career as well yeah i was trying to get bigger all the time because you're getting bigger i just wasn't used to the physicality so yeah but the f- for the first year it was essentially myself and one of the other academy players who were the forwards that needed to get bigger we didn't see a training pitch really for the first year we just went in the gym hypertrophy strength power um would gave free free reign to eat as much food as you want obviously we got cooking lessons you get fed at the club um half your life is recovery anyway yeah sitting there watching tv um reading books so you're in the best environment to grow you see i come out the other side now and i understand the pressures of or the actual it's almost impossible for a lot of guys to put on a large amount of muscle mass the right way when you're working a full-time job and you have Mm. other priorities in life but i had a year of literally look don't do anything else. Yeah. Don't stress about anything else. Just get big and then you'll be able to play with the big boys at some point. And that happened eventually. Um, for me, it was a, a longer period. It was probably, I had a three-year academy period, whereas some maybe have one or two. Mm. Um, and that's purely just to get physically big enough. Like a transition. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then... And that's weights. That's getting in weights a day. And like you said, majority recovery because yeah. obviously the impact of, of rugby's is intense yeah but um, you don't you, you take that for granted as as a man of that age what sort of recovery are you doing in rugby uh well 
you're doing ice baths yeah. you're doing i did pilates my whole career did you wow um, awesome uh, anything where you get in the pool active recovery on the bike all that sort of stuff it's all taken care of it's yeah. all sorted um and it's it's probably the best part of rugby for me to be honest. i yeah. love the recovery is just like yeah what's better than going to the swim for your mates or having an excuse to sit and watch a film yeah and just do nothing <laughs> like when i've because i'm a high like high energy high a little bit adhd i believe like for me to actually sit down and do nothing is a bit hard sometimes yeah so that's why i enjoy it. i actually have to put time and effort into relaxing sometimes. and those times as well like they're um we don't we'd spoken about early and like the times when you as a team trying to bond and things like that like they're good moments like active active recovery in a in a pool like they they were good moments for like us as a as a team and and your your times when you can i don't know i i remember being, being quite strange being told by the strength and conditioning coaches like right if, if there's one thing you're gonna do today um play your playstation yeah because that means yes. i know where you're at yeah, i know yeah. where you're at the sofa and you're at least re- you're you're recovering um I mean, kind of like in hindsight, maybe it didn't have to be a PlayStation. It could no, be right. like reading a book. <laughs> I always do that. I'm like, yeah. what? how could I utilize my time better when I had my downtime? Yeah. But then you're like, you realize it doesn't matter. Like you just needed to de-stress. Yeah. You were just there to bring yourself back down. And, um, and though, but though, again, those moments, whether you're doing it with teammates, like you're at least doing it and, and you're going to know them better. You're, you're it's all part of the there. team, like principles. Sort of yeah. Yeah. And you just get tight together. You do everything together and. Yeah, like the recovery of days are awesome. You go to the hotels, you go to the spas, you go even on trips away, you do everything together. It just it makes you more cohesive as a as a team and better as a person. So it's just nice. Yeah. And I like doing it now in my life outside of rugby. One of my favourite things to do is to go and do that stuff with my friends. Like yeah. I don't drink anymore, so I don't go to the bar, I don't go and socialise at bars. So I actually after I stopped drinking, I was like, Well, how do I go and socialise? Yeah. I just went down like to the gym, to the to the sauna all that sort of place sit down it's more more of like a roman bath type feel yeah it's a social place yeah you sit there you're relaxing you're getting what you need to get done and you're chatting to people and it's a community and i think it's a massive thing of being happy so yeah that's what i went towards so yeah mate this it's um (laughs) it's insane like and i it's amazing how now i'm like drawn to actually i guess when i was as well like i didn't really want to um it's tough that balance of at the time you're like i, I need to go harder and f- h- train harder um and recovery I, I, you, this downtime all, all i feel it. like i want to be doing you don't more. prioritize you don't prioritize yeah. it and realizing how valuable it is um to to allow that longevity in what you do um so you ended up playing for scotland yeah yeah uh, and and, uh, and you're a local lad in england so how did yeah how did that come it's about? always yeah it's always an odd conversation because obviously the english accent um and I was always a bit, I was a bit, I struggled to talk about it for a while. Yeah, okay. Because it was like, I was. So, so, so how did you get it? How did, how, my yeah, granddad's how, Scottish. Granddad's Scottish. But cool. like completely Scottish through and through. And in rugby, the ruling is if it goes back to your grandparents. Um, and obviously, I'm very proud of it. It's one of my most proud moments in my life, representing a country, not the country I was born in, mm. but a country I'm connected to and passionate about. So it was an amazing thing. And, Basically, how it came about in 20, I think it was 2013, 2012, maybe. I can't, maybe, I can't remember which year. Um, it was my first start for London Irish, and I it was double header at Twickenham. And I um, I broke through and scored from about 40 meters out. Completely just blew my mind that it even happened in my life. But <laughs> I think that gave me enough exposure. And it was a few months after that that I got the call from the then sort of Scotland manager was like, are you Scottish qualified? Yes. And then had the, had the chat and then um, sort of went on that little journey, which is probably the next journey of that. Yeah, that next it, it definitely phase. Went from shit, can't do this. How am I going to do this into the deep water? Kind of getting used to that, playing first team rugby, getting used to that and then actually progressing again and then going up to international, which I'm so glad and privileged that I did and an amazing yeah. part of my life. Um, but yeah, it was only, I got five caps over a couple of seasons and yeah pretty Quite good fun. run yeah yeah pretty, really cool went to america went to canada went to argentina any different like like change because obviously going from different changing room to change room you've got club yeah. teams to um an international changing room like it's um it's definitely a step up professionalism um physicality 
tactics, everything's a step up. Mm. Um, there's a lot more pressure. Um, but yeah, just a nice to be part of and nice to know that you can. It's, I always think of it now as it's given me an, un, an unending self-belief mm -hmm. because like I said, like if, if I was a kid and I thought grandiosely about potentially one day being an international rugby player, the fact that I have done that gives me an, a, trend, a tremendous amount of self-belief. Of course it does. Yeah. And I love that. And it's one of the, the things that I sort of grab onto and take away from that part of my life because there's, there's been negative part to that, that part of my life, which have affected my life now, but there's so many positives to it that it's just a nice thought sometimes. It's just yeah. a nice thing to have as part of me, which yeah. is cool. And it's just a, yeah, it's one of those, um, yeah, it's just another part of that journey as well, isn't it? It's all just part of the journey. It's a story that has, uh, the, the start of my life has just started quite differently. Yeah. It's just a part of my journey now and it's just, it's how I choose to sort of go from that. And I've just been fortunate enough to be in a position so I have a time to think and stuff. Like I've had this sort of career and it's ended and I've had the time to think and really sit down and plan what I want to do next. And I don't think everyone has that. I think no. they get chucked into maybe forcing the stuff that they don't want to do or just society's pressures on doing certain stuff. And I feel very privileged that I haven't had those um, pressures on myself. I've, I've sort of allowed to walk my own path a little bit because of this opportunity that i got given when i was 18 so it's a very yeah very good experience very cool experience. have you and have you found the transition i know we actually spoke about something at the at the beach and um which i think is a quite cool topic mm. actually that the whole transitioning from professional sport mm. and then knowing why you're working out mm -hmm. yeah why am why am i working out like what am that, I, it's why am i doing anything what, what yeah what am i it's what am i driven for anymore? what am i going for uh, for me personally i lost my identity yes. like and that's a really big part of the conversation part, to yeah. have um but actually like the the nitty-gritty day-to-day stuff the the <clears throat> well, i'm going to the gym and i'm lifting weights why yeah like why why am i squatting this much why am i um deadlifting again and without i and we lose that driven goal part how was that for for you i completely i mean i've lived through that now and for me after rugby i've always i was just like look, i'm never going to stop working out but it's always going to be part of me like just me me as a human i get i'm happy when i'm being physically active that's i'm never going to lose that but i definitely did uh, lose the reason to for why i worked out and it, my reason for working out before that has always just been to be fit for purpose. I knew I needed to be fit for a certain purpose, mm -hmm. so I got that. And I knew how to do it, and I was in a position to do it. And um, that b brings about its own mindset, which you can utilize. So when the reason was sort of left with rugby, I struggled a big time, right, really big time, almost it, um, being inactive, it, not just being inactive, a whole host of other certain things, but brought on the depression and, and went through all that sort of thing but luckily having the knowledge and stuff to do with physical activity mindset um all that sort of thing i could pull myself out of it um and i pulled out pull myself out of it with physical activity and i didn't overthink it i didn't i wasn't like right what do i need to conquer next what sport should i get into next i just i just want to be physically active so all i did was just start moving and i started doing things that made me feel good Mm. and that's basically a, 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 um, got to the point where I, all I do now is I work out whatever I feel like I want to work out I work out and it's predominantly body weight movement I do a lot of yoga I do a lot of hiking I do a lot of walking I do a lot of running um, I do a lot of cycling I swim when I can and that's all I do I just move as much as I can and I do it because it makes me feel good yeah and no other reason Moving because you can. Moving because I can. And if something pops up into my life and I want to do it, I do it. Yeah. I like having the, the the feeling of just being a person that is physically prepared and ready to go all the time because it, it allows me to live the life that I want to live. Yeah. I want to live the life where I can go and see the world, go and experience everything, put myself into communities and empathize with the people around me. Yeah, yeah. If I'm limited by my movement, which I have been in my life with bad back and injuries and there's those time in my my life that i've really just wanted to move yeah and i never want to lose that i see i, I see people in, in 
I walk around and see people limited by the fact that they actually can't move. Mm -hmm. They might not be able to walk to the shop comfortably. I never want to get to that position. I always want to be ready to go. I want to see the world. I want to, if there's an opportunity to, to hike up a mountain, I want to go up that mountain. If there's an yeah. opportunity to go and swim like a lake, I want to go and do that. So that's the reason I do it. I do it because I want to be happy and I want to live a life worth living. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Like the, um, the, there's a guy called Tony Molina and Rewire Project and America and, um, he i listened to a podcast of his and and he spoke about that he he believed that if you wanted to run a marathon tomorrow you could i believe that like you get oh, in get into get into a, a place where you can if you want to go and run a marathon it doesn't matter if you run it in in three hours and you or you run it in five hours or you run it in eight hours but you finish and, I'm and this principle as well by the way like, yeah, i'm yeah. a weirdo yeah i'm like do you reckon i could run a marathon i'm like and i get it in my head and i'm like well let's go and try that and you just go and do it yeah and like but the idea is that you are capable that that you are in a physical shape where if someone said like you can go run a marathon tomorrow you got i'm going to get round and i'm i'm not going to be unable to do that yeah that's the, the the big thing for me with all this is my it's all i've done in my life no matter what i think of it's just built a mindset mm. like <clears throat> i've done cool things in my life successful things in my life there's also been a hell of a lot of tough times to get to those successful periods and all those tough times have built a resilience. And now with hindsight, looking back and thinking about all the times you've done those fitness sessions, the grueling fitness session that you just hate, right? You don't mm. want to be there, but you got through them. Mm -hmm. And it's that knowing that I can get through them now drives me into other parts of my life where maybe there's resistance or struggle somewhere. I understand that there's just a mental cap there. And if you just fight through it, you do all pretty much always get through it. And it's only training that sort of resilience that will be able to get to a place where you can get to that position basically and i love that part of my life yeah because it allows me to go and do stuff that i'm maybe not being able to do if i didn't think i could yeah but because i think i can i can if that does that make sense yeah no yeah. totally yeah totally it's um it's something that i think is uh is crucial in in sport but um the fact that it's that bit after sport yeah do you know what i mean it's the the bit when you're you're done and and uh it's taken me a while definitely to figure out like why am i going and doing it and actually maybe it's because right now i'm i'm waiting for the next thing that i want to try and go towards that we talk, we spoke yeah. about like doing challenges and yeah and kind of doing something to really i guess stretch that band of what you're physically capable of doing when you're in a professional environment you're you're specific you're i am i am going to be built for purpose and i'm going to be built for doing this job this role exactly to the best of my ability yeah um but now because i don't have that one singular purpose in in my my movement my sport whatever um i can be kind of really multi-dimensional i think that's that's how i kind of get yes. multi the fact that I can sprint, run, I can, do I can swim, I can jump, I can climb, I can do that, and I want to be able to do that. And um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting transition. I find it feels like you're living your sport. life unlimited at that point. When you, yeah. if you can get a sense of, like anyone knows the feeling when they they go and work out and they 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 finish that workout and they feel a bit better, Pumped. a bit stronger, a bit, you know, a bit more confidence. That's it's a sort of the same thing as walking straight with your shoulders back. It mm. gives you that self confidence. And I just want to always have that. So I just want to always be healthy, mobile, fit, strong. And it just it, it brings about that mindset. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's all part of a sort of self-development, right? Yeah. You want to be your best self, then you've got to have a the, the shell of what's carrying this brain. It might as well be in its tip-top form. Yeah. So that's sort of my mindset on that sort of thing. To be my best self, I might have to physically be my best self also. Yeah. I always think, and from from my psychological side that, like you said, you went through depression, I went through the same of, of when I lost my sport. And, mm. But I knew that if I could keep my body in the best shape possible, I stood the best chance of, of kind of like riding that wave for the moment. And, and it, was only a period of my life and and there are moments when it spikes and troughs but fundamentally that wave is 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 getting much much um more stable it's learning and, to ride that wave right yeah and then you and your physical 
ability and your physicality is is that thing that can is a constant like the fact that we have one body yeah um that's that's it like take, one, we, you have to take care of it we've got to, we've got to look after it and um and then it'll look after that i'm i'm interested to hear about you the more mental side of mm. what, what what you kind of mm. went through because i know that led you to um exploring breath work what and we ran through a session today yeah. um and you were like you were so keen to do oh, it I like it. i love I it, love it. I love you it. were so keen to do it and i think um <laughs> if there's anything that any any one especially if you're like a an up and coming athlete like realizing the power of this stuff within within your mind and your sport yeah. and and realizing how much you can improve your performance both physically and mentally but where did um because when when you were speaking about being young yeah as, as an athlete <clears throat> you are in that mindset you're just doing yeah and it's a great place to be yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you're just doing, you're just doing and, and you are really in the flow of everything yeah, yeah, yeah um but then once you become older you become aware you've got um, stresses and strains mm -hmm. both financially physically mentally whatever um but then kind of i feel when you're done from the sport then the, the psychological really becomes yeah. to the forefront you start of your mind. thinking about it yeah totally and it's i don't think it's a coincidence that that is always the biggest struggle for anyone that comes out of out of sport so it's for, a lot to comprehend sometimes. yeah so for you what was kind of your journey into um understanding more of the, the, the psychological yeah. yeah it's a bit honestly that's been the biggest journey so it's mm. been three years since i stopped and i was always fully aware that there was going to be a journey that i needed to go on in order to get to where i needed to go it didn't it was still a hard pill to swallow that so i had to go on that. and i was i was starting to be aware of some negative stuff that was going on so there's two sides of this there's the lifestyle change that had happened in the end of my career but there's also the fact that i'd had sort of double figure concussions which changes in um your brain chemistry and yeah it has side effects of depression anxiety all these personality change all these things and i started to notice these things post rugby oh, and during rugby as well um so yeah essentially brain injuries changing stuff and so i had to become aware of my mindset because it was affecting my life negatively mm. I, do, I don't think i would have been aware of it in, unless it did so i'm quite now glad that i've been through what i've been through no matter how negative because it's br brought about a positive change um but yeah so basically what i went through is a pretty deep part um deep spell of depression for quite a long time um, obviously a career end, I went for a relationship and I moved country. I was physically going through some stuff. Um, so I just wanted to take control of it and taking control of it for me was starting to work out again, eat healthy again, and then explore the mindset part of it. This whole thing that I sort of was hearing about, but not doing it. It was meditating, it was being mindful. It was all the stuff that I'd always sort of just no i didn't want to hear about that it yeah. didn't really line up with me but and i just i went fuck it let's just let's figure this out so i went i just i think i downloaded headspace for the first one yeah just started doing it didn't really know what i was doing had no idea what i was doing but just did it and just right let's just do it every day for whatever did it every day for 180 days and started to become more self what you you do it just teaches you the basic stuff you need to know and then just me being me, I get, I do, if I get interested in something, I go and research and I started, did, started doing that. And that led me into, I think my resistance at the beginning to all this was the spiritual woo-woo side. Yeah, it was it's the, the same semantics, for me. It's right, is how it gets talk, talked about. But for me, when it started relating back to more of science and more of a logical approach and stuff that I could understand, like you're tapping into your nervous system and you're actually changing your consciousness, for, not through a spiritual thing or whatever it's actually you're just getting into a different state in your body mm. for me that's a lot easier to process so the, when the breath work sort of started coming in i started to understand it does you can get yourself into your rest and digest you can all that sort of stuff that's where it really started taking another a level up for me it was i was i was my i was meditating i was being mindful and i was doing that sort of stuff but then i linked it together with the breath work Mm. And for me, the audio cue and the physical cue of breathing allows me to be really present. So just the, sometimes just the visual, I saw the, the audio like, uh, yeah, I yeah. can concentrate on that sound mm. and be present on that sound. So it's just a nice little loop for me. The breath work completely gets me present. It changes my consciousness. I've explored it so much now. 
I feel I'm so deep into it. I, I can I do my all my cardio based around my breath work. Yeah, or like or around my heart rate. Yeah, that. we spoke about nasal breathing. Like and even then, everything. you actually you're um, you even just aware like even small little runs, small and little jogs things. And things. I'm like fitter that. than I've ever been. I'm more present than I've ever been, and it's all to do with my breath. And for me, it's as simple as it's you're controlling your oxygen, which mm. is an, the energy you need for your cardiovascular system. So mm -hmm. it's just like it just makes sense to to get good at breathing yeah because if you get you can get good at breathing all the time when you're in those high stress and times where you need to be sort of aware mm. you can take it down and get into those whatever you need to get into well a lot of the sessions we were well, part of the session we did today around the um the, the walking on the rope mm. and then realizing like getting you uh, i was showing you guys about like, realizing where your mind's at when you do when you're yeah. doing that stuff and then how's your breathing are you holding your breath things like that did uh um, that people are so unaware of and that's I guess totally the same headspace that I came from where I was um, I was so not used to this esoteric way of looking at things and I didn't it was so out there and I was like wow yeah. I, I, I can't meditate I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna be I can't do this, uh, this is yeah, nowhere yeah. near my persona yeah. so I need to figure out I want I want something practical and I think that listening to that it's we as athletes we kind of want something practical to use and i guess that's part of my journey is and and challenge now is to help translate this way of um getting this stuff across to people that is that is so beneficial yeah. but both whilst you're playing um and then after because now life, at the moment in it's life. yeah in life. in life totally so like without i can completely park the sports and that side of things and for me coming out with the depression and stuff and talking about the stuff that happened in my concussions. I went through a period of, I, I'm not sure exactly what was going on, but my sort of, my stress response was just too much. Mm. I, I was getting almost panic attacks type si situations at the smallest of things. And so it was, it was affecting me physically. And that's where I really got into the breath work. Cause I, I heard, I think I saw a Ted talk and they said, it's impossible to have a panic attack if you're slowly breathing, which obviously the parasynthetic, you're going to yeah. be in your rest. It's, it makes sense. And, so I listened to that TED talk and I started doing all that. And that's why I started doing the breath work is because of this negative thing that happened. I was getting these panic attacks and then I taught myself how to not have those panic attacks from just breathing. And then actually I taught myself to be calm just whenever I needed to be. Mm. It's not just when you're having a panic attack. It's when something shit happens in your day and anger pops up. And then maybe back in the day, I wouldn't even be aware of what anger, if it was anger or if it was, you know, a sadness or whatever. But now just being present and aware and, oh, there's anger. Why is yeah. that there? You could park it and just move on the rest of your day. Yeah. And it's that awareness that you have to have. And that's what I feel is the biggest positive to my life is, is that we all have human emotion. Like mm. you can't just, like I don't have, I don't get sad. I don't get pissed off. I don't get resentful. We all have human emotion. It's just, we have to have an awareness of it. And I believe being present and practicing being present is how you get that awareness. And eventually you start asking those inner questions, don't yeah. you? You start asking like, well, it starts, it begins with being self-reflective. So you reflect on a situation mm -hmm. that's happened and then you hope that that reflection happens. You just shorten that period of reflection Mm -hmm. um even to the point where like is what i'm about to respond with mm -hmm. benefiting me and the person i'm about to respond 100%, with the smaller you get that window the better your life can be yeah. because then you're not you're not people aren't reacting to you yeah because if you're if you're running on those emotions those hot-headed emotions those you can say something you might not want to say and then there's that creates a reaction that has a whole process and it's going to be a negative loop so for me it's definitely changed my life because now i go through life just being a bit more grateful, a bit more accepted, a bit more empathetic to other people. Understanding their reaction to me is probably what's going on in their head. Nothing to do with me. So just get your stuff sorted and then everything else is kind of all right. Yeah. So do you think if you would, um, and I probably think I know the answer to this question, but like if you if you were, look, if you were to give what you know now to the younger version of you, mm. do you think you'd have been a better player? Uh, I've actually thought about this one. I'm, I'm not sure because I actually really like the fact that I didn't think about anything. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're... it's an odd one. Like it's a weird concept. Like I, I should be. I kind of do. I obviously do believe that 
if I was the way I was now playing, I probably would be a better player. I'd mm-hmm. be, I'd get more out of myself. I'd be more efficient. I'd be more mindful. I'd be more aware of what's going on. But saying that, as an 18 to 21 year old doing what I was doing, maybe I didn't need to be overthinking stuff. Maybe yeah. I didn't need the pressure of that on myself. So I, it's hard to say. With hindsight, it's 2020, right? You can say yeah, anything. Totally. But um, my life is better now because of it, 100%. Um, yeah, I can, I can answer that question because... It's, it is what yeah. it is. I think if we look at it from a um, sort of a sort of the motion side of it, yeah. how do I deal with my emotions? Yeah. Then, yeah, people, uh, kids and young, I know my 18 year old to probably 22, like I was highly emotional um, and very protective of one new. And, and actually, I think, like, well, I needed to go through that. I needed to be that person because that wouldn't have got me to the next little bit. Yeah. Um, I actually feel like the performance side of stuff would have definitely helped me. So like the breath work and being okay, a that, being a yeah. that being able That's to like tolerate CO two, like probably not having to train as hard, yeah, yeah. being able to go not as intensely in the gym but get better benefit, yeah. um, recover better, yeah. and I probably wouldn't have put myself through the trauma of injury that I went through. I, yeah. So I yeah. So think. on that side of things 100 percent. yeah like if i was physically doing the stuff that i'm doing now and if i had the knowledge of everything i know now i would physically 100 percent be better but yeah that's all part of the journey like, yeah you're always learning like i mean i'm still learning now i'm 28 like sort of 10 12 years into this journey of physically imp- physical improvement and i'm nowhere near being the end result of what i want to be it's going to be a lifetime thing mm. right but i'm definitely have a hell of a lot more information in there than i did at the start so yeah it, it's any information I could have told my younger self would definitely improve because you know when you're young, younger self you do anything you try anything you're just like yeah. you have no idea what you're doing you just try everything and just hope something sticks right yeah that's how it is and then and you also you have that mindset of you're unbreakable you're invincible and it's full speed ahead you have the blinkers on you don't think about anything else and you go for it um, but now you just don't need it it's just different perspective I don't need to be doing that so mm. I, I don't know it's, uh, it's definitely oh, 100% changed my life for the better all this sort of stuff so yeah back then definitely would have been better but emotionally i probably would have kept it the same <laughs> i wouldn't yeah. want to overwhelm my young self mate <laughs> yeah no i totally i'd like <laughs> i wouldn't be like oh mate you, you've got to go and play against go have some reflection of... on friday and i'll be like oh shit as opposed to at the time i would have just Let's not think about it. Let's yeah, just let's go play the game. Put that somewhere else. And yeah, go and uh, do it. And uh, that's a fine. It's a really fine balance. And and I, t- I'm a big believer in like right. An- analyze what you need to analyze. Yes. Analyze what, and then once you've got there, tomorrow when it's game day, when when the big events coming up, you are what wherever you're at right now, you're the best version of yourself you can be right now. Yeah. Um. And past that, you can do the work to get to the next level. And and keep the work going. Yes. But right now, you you have what you have right now, uh, yeah. and make the best of it. I've on. always run off like always control what you can control, and yeah. everything else don't worry about. And I've always always thought like that. I don't know why. Um, that's just a quite I think quite a stoic way of thinking. When I look into it now, that is a quite a stoic way of thinking. But back in the day, that's just how I thought. So what does that mean for me back in the day? That's just I control different. I controlled up to the point of me running out on the pitch. I can't control what happens on the pitch. So mm. don't worry about that. Just do what you need to do. Go and make your tackles. Go and hit your rucks. Go and do your line outs. So that's, like we talked about cues earlier. I just have to think about what I need to do in the game for a cue for me to get into the game. Mm. First tackle, boom, I'm in the game. I don't mm. have to think about anything. I can just be present. You're in flow state and you're just there, right? And it's a weird one to think about now because like, I would love to be able to produce that into something else. But I've, never created that in my life in anything else apart from playing in front of bloody 50,000 people in a rugby game yeah <laughs> yeah it's a weird life experience it's gladiatorial it's it's an odd thing it is yeah yeah and you can't you can never really describe it to someone and you can never really tell them how to react I think I'm always chasing it now as well though yeah like I'm always there's always part of me chasing that adrenaline field yeah thing. I totally agree yeah and that's probably why I want to go and do all this weird stuff mm. like I want to go and climb mountains and I want to go and like cycle somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Like I just, we I spoke about it. Do something. And we spoke about it. Like the question that to probably ask around that is like, why am I doing it though? Like, is it my ego? Going, yeah. Don't oh, mate, it? I, and, and actually 
is there anything wrong with saying, well, yeah, I do want to go and feed my ego a little bit. I feel right now it That's needs a- it. Um, and I, I want to do that. But it's after that, it's I'm going back to myself. I'm going back being me. Um, or And I I was talking about that Vipassana. And, yeah. and do, do I want to go and do a Vipassana for, for the sake of doing it? Mm. Uh, or is it to actually really further myself in what I'm capable of doing or mm. do I want to do it so I can go and see my mates and go, well, I've just done this 12 day. Wait, this like, is all silent. part of that self-awareness though, isn't it? Like yeah. for me, I know that for large parts of my life, I've been driven by ego. Um, I'm definitely a show off. I'm the youngest kid in my family. Like I can get away with anything. <laughs> I'm fully aware of all that. Um, it's positive and negative as with everything. It's yin and yang, right? It, it's allowed me to be successful at what I needed to be successful at because I wanted to show off about it. There's, there's not, there's, that's definitely a thing. Like, I, I wanted to get good at something so I could show off. Mm. That's part of my ego, but that made me get good at something. Yeah. So I don't ne- necessarily think it's negative. And now I'm on the other side or at a place where I can sort of think and reflect on it. Then no, I can't say the ego is necessarily a bad thing because it's got me to some good places. But now I'm aware of it. I can be like, is this my ego? Yeah, it might be. Okay, let's just see where it goes, but let's just maybe just be nice about it. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, use your ego in a good way. Let it do good stuff. Let yeah. it go help people. Yeah. Let it yeah. go do things that can actually, maybe not just help you, but help others. Um, so it's important. Like, we all have egos. Of course we do. We're all, male ego is a thing. We all mm-hmm. have it. Um, oh, just, I think just rugby, be aware of it. Rugby's a, oh, it's, mate, it's, it's a, it's a history of it's been a big one. Um, there's been more and more people talking about uh, mental health in it and, yeah. and, and cricket had a transition where yes. we, we, we spoke about and, and just sport in general now. It's just and really, just you know, males in general. As yeah. a generation, our generation, we're more open to a conversation about mental health yep. and vulnerability, which is amazing. Because if you think about our generation above ours and the generation above that, yeah, very closed. Yeah. Very closed. But I think now, I mean, obviously this is what this is all about. Yeah, a bit of male vulnerability is it's going to go a long way, I think. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it is totally, and um, and and recognizing it, yeah, mate, that's because um... the ego it has self destructive parts, right? And when you look at the bad in the world, where has the bad come from in this world? Yeah, I look at it, and a lot of it comes from bloody male ego, mm. and it's not a good thing. But we but... spoke about how you need it as well. In but you do to, need to, it. To, to, I've never I've never seen a high-end professional athlete without a little bit of this has to be a bit I've never seen a successful person yeah. without an ego. Uh, and if it's in a team, it's it's directed towards, yes, there's egos in a team, but that that team has a, a common goal, yeah. has a common goal. Yeah. And the best results do come from when you can park your ego at the right times, but you do need it in order to, to probably do your job, uh, to do it well, and to keep it. Yeah. Definitely keep yeah. it. And... Uh, and yeah, to, to succeed because you otherwise that self confidence gets diminished. Um, yeah, and you need that self confidence totally. And it is is as anything in life, it's finding the balance. Like just find your balance with it, and then mm. go forward. Too much of anything is a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So just use that principle. Use your ego wisely. Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and be like, oh shit, I've got an ego. I better completely dispel that. And- wander around this earth as mm-hmm. an ego-free person and just like well, whatever yeah oh come on we've all got personalities <laughs> yeah. we can live all live up to our egos a little bit yeah no it's um it's really it's really important that people get, grab a hold of that what's um what's next for you mate uh, i get asked that quite a bit and i probably i just kind of like living my life however i want to live it yeah um I feel quite privileged, as I said before, that I'm in the position I'm in. It comes about quite a lot of stresses because you feel like you're forced to figure out what you need to do. Yeah, um, I've felt a lot of pressure in the last couple of years to figure out what I need to do. But I got to a point probably last year, I was like, what? I'm just going to stop stressing about what I should do mm. and concentrating on what I think, like what I need. And what I need is I want to be happy. I want to be physically fit. And what makes me happy? Helping people, being physically fit you know, just living to my sort of morals and compass and living to my own values and holding myself accountable kind of thing. So that's all I'm doing at the moment. Um, in a more specific sense, I'm a painter and decorator. I'm, a, I'm a, my own boss, which I really enjoy. It's a trade that 
makes me money. I can, it's always there, but I don't want to do it long term. The thought of doing that long term for me is quite suffocating. Mm -hmm. I understand there's a life where I can just work every week, earn good money, live in a house, do that. But for me, just my own journey and what I'm on, that's a little bit suffocating for me. So I, I believe there's some opportunity elsewhere. I believe online. I want to help people online. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but we're starting to build a sort of path that we're going to walk down um, and get our ideas together and utilize all this life experience, get it online yeah. and help people basically. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so just figuring that out, but living my life whilst doing that and living my life to the best way I can. So holding myself accountable, doing what I love doing and then just going off gut and just sort of living every day as it comes at the moment until I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Mate, yeah. No, it's um, it's been a great day actually getting to meet you, getting to know you more. Like I have no doubt we're going to do some more stuff together yes, because yeah. um, you definitely like minded. And I like minded like, individuals, mate. Yeah, surround yourself in the good people. Surround yourself yeah. in people that think the same way. Um, I love, I love the fact that you've had that transition from professional sport and um, and then found this much more holistic way of dealing with yourself. Uh, much more well-rounded way of dealing with yourself you've realized there's dark patches yeah um but how much benefit all of this work can actually it's all a learning can curve. Be to, yeah it's all a learning curve there is no good without the bad right yeah so it once you accept that all the bad can become good mm -hmm. do you know what i mean so just go through your life and accept the challenges that come with it learn from them get better this is how I kind of roll these days. <laughs> Love that, man. You can't like you let your mindset be the thing that stops you. Love that. Yeah. And if people want to find you, Instagram at Kieran Low O Eight. That's me. Instagram, Twitter, same go, thing. I think. Go find him. Go find him. Definitely, there's some good stuff on there. <laughs> it's all beginning. It's all beginning. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Just really appreciate mate, it. Awesome. Really, really great. Thanks, bud. I run out. No worries. <laughs>